the Shara's Reading Podcast, and I'm Shara. Today, I am in Duke Garden. Today, I am interviewing Ms. Olaf Bemisola Rude Persevich. It's season three, and it's March, Women's History Month. Ms. Olaf Bemisola is an environmentalist. She is an African-American children's book author, which I think is really cool. And she wrote, and she wrote the book, Make Them Makes a Birthday Treat. And I'm really excited to read it on my podcast. And I can't wait to interview her. Come on, let's dive right in. Today, my special guest is Miss... Ola Bemisola Rude Persevich. Your name is the longest I've ever seen, so please help me properly pronounce my name as my your your name. Sure. Well thank you, Ishara, for having me. And um thank you for asking me about my name. Uh you said it really well. It's Olu Bemisola Rude Perkovich. Yeah, you did. <laughs> talked. It took me a while. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it when people take the time with my name. That's me. <laughs> That's me. I've experienced the same thing. Yeah. I have a lot of them, too. That looks like a great location where you are. Thank you. It is very peaceful. I did some digging and discovered your name has an origins from Nigeria. Yes, it does. Who named you and why did you hate and what was the story behind why they named you that? Olubemisola. Sure. So Olubemisola is actually a sentence in the Yoruba language from Nigeria. And it can mean God has brought me honor or God has brought me wealth. God has brought me a gift. Uh, and <laughs> I know I like that meaning a lot. And um, so my father is from Nigeria. And my mom was from Jamaica. Um, And actually, a lot of Jamaicans um, have their origins in Nigeria, too. Um, Nigeria and Ghana. Uh, So they decided to name me Obi Solo. My original ancestry is from Ghana. And also, my name also is an origin from Africa. I oh, forgot really? to ask my parents which part, but it's Swahili for sign and phenomenon. Oh, I love that. It's also Arabic and also I forgot the country, but it was sometime in the ancient times. Oh, very I cool. The country's name at the moment. Well, I like that meaning and I love your name. It's beautiful. Ishara is a beautiful name. You. Out of all the illustrators in the world, why did you choose Miss Lin- Linda Lydia Mah? Oh, yeah, Lydia, Lydia Mba. Um, so a lot of times when you're just the author of the book and not the illustrator, the publisher will match you up with an illustrator who they think might work well with the story. So with my Makeda Makes books, um the publisher sent me a few different illustrators. They sent me some samples and some sketches that they did for and work for other books. And they asked me which one I thought would really match the best with the story. And I really, really loved Lydia's work. I think that it has a lot of joy and it has a lot of personality. And I think the character, um, I, that's how I think of the character, as a character with a lot of joy and personality. I like that description. Also, I'm actually in my work writing my own graphic novel. Oh, that's awesome. I would love to write a graphic novel one day. I'm a little scared of it, though. Can you give me some tips? Like, how did you get started? Well, I I grew up in a house where there's two scientists. They're going to be free when my uncle finishes school. So there's going to be free doctors in the family. Wow. So I grew up learning a lot of microbiology and science and oh, wow. and virology. That is exciting. I love science. 
immune system, and a while later, when I was seven, I got the idea. How about you write a graphic novel? And that's how it's going. I'm going to launch it in the summer, maybe? Summer? Oh, oh. Don't that's know. exciting. I hope you have a big celebration. Launching your first graphic novel is a very special thing. I think it's going to be one book, and there's going to be three chapters. They're going to be long. Oh, well, I, as you may have seen, I can write a lot of long books and long chapters, too. Sometimes the story, it just depends on the story. Yeah, it just depends on the story. <laughs> Learning about all the amazing places you lived is amazing, really. I lived in Kenya when I was one years old. Oh, I love that we have that in common. My family did that. My mother studied HIV, and my father helped her. She oh. she runs her own lab even, which I'm really happy for her about. I'm very happy, too. That's important work. So, out of all those amazing places, which one is your favorite? Oh, that's a hard question. I have a hard time with favorite questions, except for my favorite color, which is yellow. Um, That's a pretty color, and it's very bright. Yes, I love yellow. Um, places, I don't know. I've loved all the places that I've lived for different reasons. And one of the reasons why I really love New York City is because it kind of has all of the places that I've lived um, right here in one city. There are people from all over the world who live in New York City, and there are communities from all over the world in New York City, and so um, I get to kind of take all the places I've been with me. Guess which part and guess which are the two favorite parts of New York City I love? Hmm. Let's see. Do you like... The Bronx? What? <laughs> oh, the Bronx has very beautiful um, botanic gardens. So um, I like that in the Bronx. Uh, do you like Manhattan? Yes, that's my favorite place. What are, what are the places that you like in Manhattan? I my fa Actually, there's three favorite places. I got to go to the plaza and have tea with my nine eye, which is my. Oh, mom. I have I love tea at the plaza. It's so tasty. We did it for her birthday. Surprise alert! <laughs> that sounds and like a great my birthday. My favorite part was Central Park. Central got Park got is one of my favorite places in the whole city. I love Central Park. I agree. I got to rollerblade there. Oh, I used to rollerblade there. Isn't it fun? So much fun. It's so big and open. You know, if you go to Central Park now, my daughter, um, she writes poetry. And she was in a project. And one of her poems, if you have an audio tour on, you can hear her reading one of her poems when you get to a part of the park called Seneca Village. Whoa. Yeah, my daughter's cool. Cool. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. So, let's talk about Kenya. Which was your favorite part of Kenya you wanted to live in? Well, when we lived in Kenya, uh, we lived in Nairobi. Um, so, I loved living in Nairobi. And we also took some trips out of the city. And another place I really liked nearby was Mombasa. Um, a really nice beach. It was very pretty. I got to go to Nairobi. That's where I. That's one of the places in Kenya I lived in. Oh, fantastic! For graphic novels, did you find something you loved with you? If you ever want to write a graphic novel, what's the favorite thing about a graphic novel you love? I really like the idea of of telling stories with both words and pictures. I think that a lot of young readers love graphic novels. And so, yeah, see, and I want to write, I think of my writing as something that I also want to be in service to readers for. 
So when readers say like, oh, I would love a graphic novel, I feel like I would like to try to give them something that they're asking for. The problem for me is that because I'm not an artist, or at least I'm not a very good visual artist, I like to do art and do it for fun. I would just write the story part, the script part, and then someone else would do the art. So I had a chance to try it out a little bit. I was part of a book called Wonderful Women of the World, and it was um, a, a comic book, a graphic uh, collection inspired by Wonder Woman and DC Comics. And so the person I got to write about uh, was a little girl at the time named Mary Copany. And she was doing a lot of work for her city in Flint, Michigan, to bring clean water to her city and to br bring clean water to kids in other places. So yeah. I got to do the little graphic story of her. And the book you wrote. Now yeah. we're together. Oh, I also am an environmental ambassador. Oh, you are. So tell me sort of what got you involved in doing that. Well, I've actually always cared about the environment. One time I made one time I did a campaign about saving the lions and stop killing them with poison. That's, that is a great Okay. magnification will cause it to come back to us, so you'll end up killing yourself eventually. You are absolutely right. I really love, I really love the stories you tell about the places you are, you lived in, because it makes me think about all of the places and makes it come together like a story. Oh, well, I think that all of us have stories to tell. Um, I think that we can tell our stories in different ways. For me, I like to write books, and that's my way of telling a story. Um, for some people, they make movies, or they make TV shows, or they do paintings, or they dance, or they play music, or compose music. There's so many different ways to tell our stories. I think it's just such a special thing for us to be able to share stories. Also, before I almost forget, what's your daughter's name? My daughter's name is Adadayo. That's a pretty name. Thank you. What made you choose it? Um, well, I really like the meaning. Adadayo means kind of like crowning joy. or crown. It's like crown becomes joy. So I thought that was an appropriate name. It's a pretty name for a child. Thank you. What inspired you to create Make Up? What inspired you to create Make the and also, is she a reflection of you as a kid? Um, a lot of things inspired me, and I think, yes. So, Makina and Makeda is very much um, a lot of things about me and my childhood. Um, I really like to make things uh, when I was a kid and now. Same. I See, and so I used to like make dolls. I used to make little towns. I used to make books. I used to do all kinds of making. So um, I used to like to, well, I still like to cook. I used to do a pretend cooking show uh, for my little, little sister. And then when my daughter was little, I would do the same thing with her. So like all of those things, I think, became part of the story. And I really wanted to write a book joyful book about a joyful little black girl um, and her everyday life. I, I just wanted to show her everyday life and show her being creative and curious and joyful about her life. This character, Makeda, lives in Brooklyn, so um, about her life in Brooklyn. My mother used to live in Brooklyn. Oh, I did too for a long time. I love Brooklyn. She took me to the place, the old place she lived, and it was very fun seeing it. Oh, that's nice. New people, new people moved into the house, but it's fun to see my mother's old house. Yeah, that's cool. Make that is a wonderful character. She is creative and smart, and she is beautiful in that way. And I like that Make that wants to be herself. And look, you share with us that Make that is. With a llama, where she has to choose between being herself and showing her culture, or being like everyone else. Yeah. 
you in this situation or dilemma as a kid or as an adult where you have to choose between being yourself and being enough or being like everybody else? I think a lot of times throughout my life, definitely as a kid and now as an adult and as an author, even there are times when I have to take a risk or take a chance. And usually I know in the end that I'll be much happier being true to myself and being true to who I am. And I have to know that sometimes I might share something about myself and there might be someone that doesn't understand it or doesn't really like it or it's just not for them. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's something bad about me. It's just not for them. Like we're different. And that's kind of a beautiful thing, right? That we can all be different. We're all different in your our own way. We don't exactly. have to. We don't have to be someone else. We could be ourselves. Exactly. In a world like this, where there's where there is so much more, we have to be ourselves and show love and light to those who have been lost in the dark. Exactly. And I think when we share a little bit about ourselves and what makes us unique, then we can also learn more about each other and learn more about the world. I love that with science. Those are my two favorite subjects in class. I'm actually homeschooled. But those are my absolute favorite subjects. <laughs> we have additional books where Megda is facing other challenges, such as science fairs and math quests. Math quests are like when you're in a puzzle place and you have to solve math problems to get through. I love both science fairs and math quests. And she might um, be in a science dilemma or have a science challenge pretty soon. I'm working on another book, a chapter book, um, that will involve a science fair um, as part of a series about a, a group of third graders. Um, so they're going to have like a science fair challenge. And then I'm working on another book that's about some kids at a very special camp. And um, that will also have a little bit of a science challenge and um, an animal sanctuary. Ooh, I'm definitely going to buy them. Definite, 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 definite. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I understand Make is a version of you, and her character is a combination of you and, and someone else? Mm -hmm. Or is she made up? Um, I think probably all of those answers. So there's a lot about her that is also how my daughter was when she was in second grade and first grade and third grade. And so I put a lot of that um, in the story. And even when I was describing her to the artist, Lydia, I sent her some pictures of my daughter to kind of inspire her for the for the character art and then there's um there are parts of her you know I meet a lot of young readers when I travel or when I visit places or book groups or schools um and so I'm always noticing things about people that I meet and so sometimes I take the things that I notice and I put them in the characters that is a very good answer I was expecting for one or the other but not all three. <laughs> you choose different foods from different places because of the places you lived in. Like, Halo Halo is a dessert from the Philippines. I'm actually part Filipino. And oh. Halo Halo is Tagalog for mixed, mixed, which yeah. is actually me because I have a lot of the heritage. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about your heritage. I'd love to know that. Well, I'm part Ghanaian, African, Portuguese, European, Indonesian, Indian, Guyanese, American, Portuguese. Yeah, potentially a lot of places around the world. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I but my memory track just stopped there. <laughs> Well, that's a lot to remember. I know. Usually I'm really good at naming them. But this time was that one of those rare days where the memory track would stop. It because just I added a couple 
little more when they looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> a little more, and I don't, and I don't remember the whole memory track. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Oleg Bemisola Rude Persevich, for joining us on my podcast. Thank you so much, Ishar. It was a pleasure to join you today. And I would love to send you some Makeda stickers um, from the first two books. So I will maybe get uh, a good address from your mom because I really appreciate you reading and sharing. And I love what you're doing with your podcast, sharing the joy of reading in books with everyone. Yeah. Stay tuned because I'm going to read Make the Make the Birthday Treat. Welcome back to the Yishar's Reading Podcast. It's Stephen Fring, everybody. That was an amazing interview with Miss Ola Bemisola Rude Persevich. Now that I can say your name correctly, it's very pretty. She is actually an NAACP award nominee. How cool is that? And today, I'm going to be reading her book, Make the Makes, A Birthday Treat. Illustrated by Miss Lydia Mba. Let's get into this book. When you open the book, you meet the main character, Mekta. She is a beautiful brown girl. With a pink tutu and pink and dark pink striped pants. Her hair reminds me of a giant fluffy brown tumulus cloud. It's so cute and it looks cute in an afro. Make the love to make marvelous things. Marvelous is another way to say amazing. Like robot puppets and cardboard cities you can see the robot puppet she has in her hand and the cardboard city she created she really is creative and funny faces funny faces for baby cousin magic potion and felt flower crowns <laughs> make them make pretty presents but they that made Nana smile. And magnificent messes that made Mama smile. <laughs> You're on my side of the room, said her sister Candace. Candace loved to make rules. What they did was put a toy, toys in a lot to separate the rooms. The next day was make this birthday at school. Birthdays meant the class sang special birthday songs. Miss Evelyn Brink reads a birthday book. And the birthday kid brought cupcakes to share. Aw, how that makes me hungry. Make the did not want to make the did not want to bring cupcakes. She wanted to bring marvelous coconut drops. Nobody brings coconut drops, said Candace. Everybody brings cupcakes, said her brother James. We can't smile at nobody, said Mama. And she is not everybody. No, I like how I'm to speak. I want to share things I love, said Mika. Coconut drops and back home stories. You can see her sister. You can see her sister in this page, in this page, and her brother. You can see her sister and brother in this page, in this page. And that night, make them make sweet, spicy coconut drops with mom and Nancy. They sang while they cooked. They di they danced and dropped the drops. Hopefully not on the floor. Hopefully in their mouths or onto the pan. Nana made a special pot of tea. She told back home stories of mango trees and clear island waters. That sounds marvelous. 
clear island waters and mango and mango trees. Yum. That sounds delicious. It reminds me when I was in Guyana. But for me, it was coconut water. Okay, so, sorry. <laughs> Let's get back into the book. Next, Mesa and her daddy made a box for her birthday coconut drops. She wrote marvelous and fancy letters across the top. She used person, a very old and pretty writing style. They should really bring cursive back into the world in the writing system because that's really pretty. You could write things that are special for people with. That's what I like to do when I write my lover cards. I like to use curse. Later in bed, she lay awake. Robert was always first to stand up for birthday cupcakes. He didn't stand up for coconut drops. The next, the next morning at school, Makeda held her marvelous box high. Birthday cupcakes, said her best friend, Glory. I like chocolate and lemon. I like cupcakes too, said Makeda. But I brought coconut drops. Will you share cupcakes after the coconut drops? Glory asked, I will share my family story, said Makeda. Coconut drops are a special treat in many countries. You can see the page when she and her friend Glory are talking. Cupcakes are a special treat in Miss Evelyn's class, said Glory. Make the frown and put down her box. But her classmates did not care about sunshine songs and back home stories. <gasps> After math games, it was time for Make this marvelous birthday celebration. Her classmates sang Miss Evelyn sang the loudest in the most off key. <laughs> Sadly, <laughs> nobody covered their ears, but not to be rude. Make the took a deep breath. Glory squeezed her hand. Make the stood and opened the beautiful box she made. Her classmates leaned in to take a look. Those cupcakes look funny, said Robert. Denise made a rude face. Did you make a mistake? Absolutely. I need my special treat, said Nathan. These are my marvelous coconut drops. Everyone looked at Nathan, then looked at the box. Everyone looked back at Nathan. Everyone looked back at the box. Tick tock, tick tock, went the classroom clock. But everyone, would anyone like to try a Miss Evelyn, I'm getting cupcakes after school, said Denise. No, you're not, said Mark. Then Glory stood up. I would like one, she said. Glory bit. She chewed. She swallowed. She smiled. I, it looks like a sweet, sunny day. She took another bite. I like birthday coconut drops. No, I love birthday coconut drop. I make them with Nana and my mama. Then make the We drop the drops. We dance. We sing. And Nana tells back home stories. You can see the page where all the classmates are looking to see if she likes them for approval. And she loves them. She Make the dances and tells them about her back home stories. Aw, that's so sweet. It turns out right. Robert stood up. My daddy makes stolen for a sweet treat. Stolen or Christolen is a German dessert often served at Christmas time. It makes a sweet treat. It has canned fruits. It's made with canned fruit, nuts, and a couple of different types of canned fruits and nuts. And also, it's really tasty. It, I think it might be really tasty. They also put powdered sugar on top of sweet treats. I would like a coconut drop. 
he bit, he smiled. I can taste the stories. Some of you make those classmates lined up for coconut drops. They told stories about their own family trees. I love Halo Halo. Halo Halo is Tagalog for mixed mix. It's a Filipino tree. I'm actually part Filipino myself on my father's side. It actually is a sweet tree. Sometimes I sort of make it without sweet beans. It's made from shaved ice, milk, and sometimes sweet beans. My favorite tree also has beans, but said Glory, but it's not sweet. It's called Moi Moi. It, I eat it for breakfast. Moi Moi is a bean, a bean like syrup, bean like syrup, cake looking thing, and you could eat it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Treats are not a treat, said Taylor. Treats are different. Treats can be different for different people, said Lisa. I love Mungu, said Yahara. It's not sweet. It's a little sour. On Sundays, my abuelo makes it with planting. Mungu is a treat served in the Dominican Republic. It's as she said, a sour. And there's and often people make it with plantains to add a little bit of sweetness. They usually use very, very ripe plantains to try to ward off the sourness. I agree, plantains are tasty, depending on how you like them. I like them when they're a chip. And we read the newspaper. Your abuelo reads the newspaper, said Lou. You can't. You need to give reminders and get gold stars. Abuelo means is Spanish for grandfather. I know how to speak a little Spanish. Our stories make our truth special, said Miss Evelyn. Thank you for share. Thank you, Mesa, for sharing your joy. Some classmates had seconds. As you can see, and others ate their own snack. All shared more songs and stories. After school, Make Then Glory made more coconut drops. They also made cupcakes and a big, colorful salad. Mm, I like all of those things, but I don't know if I would like coconut drops because. I didn't get, I never tasted it again, which I really want to. <laughs> Friendship treats are always sweet, said Mesa, and that is marvelous. The end. I hope you like this book. I'm glad Mesa decided to be herself and share her, and share her culture and stories. And that's what I love about this book. This book shows you the lesson of be yourself and don't be like other people. You could, you can mix it up. You can make a German stolen or a moi moi. Or you can make a halo halo if you're Filipino. Our treats make us special. Ourselves make us different. Whatever your treat is, you can comment down below because I would love to know. My favorite treat, ooh, let's see, I can't choose, I can't choose what my favorite, I really can't choose what my traditional favorite treat. Actually, I have a couple. Hollow Hollow, I actually make my own Hollow Hollow without the sweet beans at home. I also like coconut water. It reminds me of Diana. Yeah, and I also like a type of leaf juice thing from the Philippines called pandan. If you put it into a cake, it has this green color. No artificial dye included. It's naturally green. 
and it tastes so good. It's like vanilla, but with it's like vanilla. It has a vanilla taste, but better. I also like ube. Ube is a type of yam from the Philippines. Those I mainly like things from the Philippines. I also like hmm. Dalbat. It's a Nepalese dish. It's dal and rice. Dal is a type of thick curry that is often served in actually many countries. It also is served in Guyana. It's very good. <laughs> That's just a couple of my favorite treats. And also, later I'll be reading the Passover guests. For today is Good Friday, the day where the Son of God, Jesus, the Messiah, was crucified on the cross for the glory of God. He sadly died, but wait for the part of the story. He rose from the dead, which is really, really cool. I really like that story, so I'm going to be reading the Passover guest later. Also, thank you for watching this episode, the first episode of Season 3. We're going to be reading so many more books and going on amazing adventures together. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode, listening and watching now this episode of the Shars Reading Podcast. Don't forget to like, review, comment your favorite treats in this book actually some of your own you could do stolen or moi moi or whatever you like bye, -bye. and smash that subscribe button i almost forgot now bye, -bye. <laughs>